Today I'm going to be showing some clips from the fights that I had in the most recent seed in Alpha 19 in 7 Days to Die. There are two things I want to highlight in these clips. The first one is using sound and visuals to figure out where your opponents might be if they're nearby. And actually paying attention to those signals and using them to stalk your opponent. The second thing that I want to demonstrate is how to apply those tactics to being stealthy and avoid being caught yourself. I'm starting on the server at day 200 or so, which means that a lot of people are already established. I can tell that this guy shooting is shooting an M60 machine gun, which means he's probably pretty high level. But I don't really have much to lose at this point, so I figured I might as well try to kill him while he's distracted with the Horde Knight. So that went as he might predict. He had steel armor on. He said that I did a bunch of damage to him, but uh, not enough. If I had won that fight, I would have been geared immediately with very high level gear. So it was well worth the chance. The lesson here is that every time you use a gun, you're signaling to every player nearby where you are, and you need to be prepared for that. This might sound obvious, but the best way to avoid calling attention to yourself is to not use guns when you're out in the in the world. The game has a lot of stealth mechanics using melee weapons and archery. And I highly recommend using those because they can't be heard very far away. You'll still make noise, and if a player is very close, they'll hear you, but it doesn't travel past render distance. If you're looking carefully, you can spot vehicles very far away, farther away than the distance a player or a zombie will render in. I'm not really sure if this is intentional, 
or not, but it is how the game operates, and it's something you need to be aware of. Late in the game like this, higher level players will kind of get complacent, I would say, and start using gyrocopters to go everywhere. Gyrocopters are very visible against the sky, and people will often use them to land directly on top of the loot drops on large POIs. So this gyro stuck out to me, and I decided to chase him. Just like with guns, you have to be aware that every time you use a vehicle, it's a really obvious signal that a player is around to other players who happen to be looking. So the obvious advice here is don't use vehicles unless you're really prepared for a fight. This is one thing that I think a lot of PvE players especially, and even a lot of PvP players just don't fully understand, is that you will be tracked if you are using a vehicle. If I'm around anyway. Another vehicle, this time it's a motorcycle, and I can actually hear it before I see it. If you use the mouse and point in different directions, you can kind of tell which direction the motorcycle is coming from. And so I use that to figure out where to look. From there, it's just a matter of chasing him down until I get close enough.
there are certain things that happen in the game that can be seen outside of render distance. Again, I'm not sure if this is intentional or not, but it is how the game works. In this case, you can see a zombie hit a landmine. That landmine blew up too far away from where I was, meaning somebody else probably spawned in a zombie to hit it. Now that I've gotten much closer to where I think the player is, I can hear him shooting a shotgun, jumping around, I can hear zombies, and I can even see the reflection of his headlamp around the services in this POI. So from here it's just a matter of time to wait. So what are the lessons here? Well, first of all, don't use headlamps. They, for some reason, travel past the geometry of the room that you're in and reflect off of other blocks that are nearby. So that's a dead giveaway. Again, don't use guns unless you're prepared for a fight. And try to be careful about manipulating terrain or having zombies explode things, because those are also giveaways. For example, if a zombie knocks down a door that can sometimes be seen from far away, too. The little puff of smoke will come up just like in the case when the landmine exploded. Airdrops. They're another great way of figuring out where players are. Airdrops don't spawn unless a player is nearby. And it could be you, but if more than one spawns, it means that there's more than one player nearby. In this case, two spawned, and I could see that one had already been taken. So it was time to investigate. Again here I'm using the audio clues to figure out the direction the player is in. So the lesson here should be obvious as well. Be careful with airdrops. <laughs> 
don't stand around an airdrop if you really need to go pick up the loot. And oftentimes the loot in airdrops is not worth getting. But if you really needed the loot, I would recommend using Mega Crush or something like that. Grab the loot as fast as you can, and then run away as fast as you can. The less noise you're making, the better you can hear other players. Raiding a base makes a ton of noise and it forces you to stare at a wall while you're tearing it down. So if you can, you should have someone watching your back. If you already know where someone's going to be, and you know they're going to be distracted, that's the best time to attack.
If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out at all, please give it a like. Consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. Thanks.